found some more time to work on uh, my Project Cafe Racer bike. Uh, it's been a few days since I made the first start video. Uh, as you know, it was bought as a parts bike, but actually turned into my main project bike at the moment. And I had to do some work on the engine, repainted, done quite a lot on this to be honest. If you haven't watched it already, do watch the playlist. Uh, first start, well, I feel like a right chump to be honest. It wasn't the best first start video. If I was a, really a vain man, I suspect I would uh, redo that and uh, show you <laughs> a, a scripted version of it. A few problems. One was uh, not earthing the engine properly, although I'm not 100% sure it wasn't the battery. The other was the carbs, which I've only just give a bit of fettle into, leaked everywhere and the two on this side didn't seem to run, which was really bloody annoying, I can only tell you. Anyway, what I'm doing today, I'm going to go through the issues that I found. I'm going to swap a different battery in. If that doesn't make a difference with how the engine turns over, then I'll have a look at redoing the earth. If that doesn't work, then it'll probably be looking on at replacing the starter. I think it's going to be the battery of the earth, to be honest. I'm going to have the carbs off. I'm going to give them another blow through and another look at, perhaps a little bit more of a look at. I'm not going to make this video about that, but uh, and put them back on and see if I can get it on running on four cylinders and starting reliably. That's the plan. <sighs> Let's see what happens. This battery is the one I actually got with the bike and I do know that before I got it, it had been sat in a garage for five years and so I'm not sure if it was a couple of years older than that. I don't really have any experience of lithium batteries on vehicles so I'm not really an expert on them. I do know you can't use a standard charger. So what I did with this was actually put it in parallel with another battery, positive to positive, negative to negative. That way you can actually top up a battery that way. Not saying it's recommended, some of you battery experts may uh, tell me different, but it does work. And there was enough life in this battery to actually turn the bike over on its own, which amazed me after seven years, because a, a wet cell battery would have been absolutely dead at the time. Anyway, I haven't got a charger for this. A charger is actually more expensive than buying another uh, normal sort of battery for this. So rather than buy a charger for a seven year old battery, I thought I'll just buy a new battery. So I'm going to swap this one out and uh, put in just a, a standard one. I'll show you which one I bought online and uh, see if that makes any difference to how the engine turns over. To be fair to this battery, before I whip it off, I suspect there's no power in it whatsoever, but I'm just going to see if it'll still crank the engine over. If it does, then that's a miracle with a, a seven-year-old battery. But let's see just before I take it off. So, as you can see, even now after all that we did, I've not charged it again. It will turn the engine over and then it gives up. And I'm wondering if it's that that's causing the issue, and even when we've got it in with another battery, that it's just making it that bit too weak. We'll have to see. I'll swap the other battery in and we'll see how it goes. For whom the bell tolls. Have they got an earth touching somewhere, which we don't want? Keeps your heart young. So they reckon. God, these are light. So this is the Shore Eye battery that I got with the actual bike, and it's seven or eight years old, and I've never actually properly charged it. I've only, like I say, put it in parallel with another battery. So it's not done so badly. And just out of interest, let's see on this uh, charge checker. Has it got any charge whatsoever? And it's saying no poids. <laughs> I can't blame it. I think it's uh, just about had its chips. And this is what I've bought to replace it. And I just know, and I will weigh these in a minute, a hell of a lot heavier. Pretty much a standard CB750 battery. Got it from Tanya Batteries. I'll shove a link in the description. Literally, it was on my doorstep the next day. This one's uh, an AGM one. 
glass mat technology. You can lie it on its side and all that kind of thing. Uh, let's just have a quick look and see what power there is on that one. Oh, it's come fully charged, so expected that anyway. The Shorai Lithium, one kilo, 64 grams. Um, the AGM, 4.7 kilos. So that's 3.7 kilos heavier. Virtually five times as heavy. And it feels five times as heavy. It's about one and a half centimetres wider. I think it's about the same on that. Yeah, maybe it's a tidgy little bit. I'll stop using the word tidgy. Maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, yeah, about half a centimetre. My expectation is it'll turn over a bit better now. That sounds healthy enough. I'll just whip off the throttle cables and then undo the clamps on the uh, rubber manifolds and it should be actually quite easy. Easier to get these out once I've got them loose. I've undone the two clamps on the other side. Now luckily it's a warm day. I've already uh, not got fuel connected. I do expect there'll be some fuel leakage no matter what. But these manifolds, oh look at that. They almost want to come off. remember to put these back before I put them back on the bike. There we go. And I've also got a box to put them in so I don't leak fuel everywhere. I expect the float bowls will have some fuel in them so when I uh, take it off I'll just see how much there is in each one. And I'll probably end up with fuel everywhere. So, not a great deal, but there is fuel in that one. Interesting. <laughs> the main jet's just fallen out. What the hell went on there? Okay, there is fuel in that one, and it is a bit low. Less fuel in that one. And the last, which I think was the flooding one. And there's a fair bit of fuel in that one. There was fuel in all of the float bowls, so there was some fuel getting through. That, to be honest, absolutely floors me. I cannot imagine why that's come out. The bike's hardly run, so it's not vibration. I mustn't have tightened it in. Or oh, maybe the thread's gone in here. I will have to check that. But that really does surprise me. That isn't the reason why this side wasn't running I don't think so I'm not overly uh, thinking I found a smoking gun what I'm gonna do is blow through all of the jets again investigate this one make sure that these are set which I'm sure they are yeah. but I'll take the actual uh, valves out again make sure the seats are okay and make sure the fuel lines are blowing through then I'll put it all back together and put it back on the bike and see what happens. The 
there's nothing obviously blocking the actual uh, float valves. Now these are the ones with a metal seal or a metal tip not a rubber one and they do sometimes take longer to bed in but it should be working fine. Next thing I'll do is I'll blow a little bit of air through and see that we've got air coming out of here to say that this bit's not blocked. Be very careful not to get the fuel on the camera or in my eyes. <laughs> Pretty, um, yeah, <laughs> no worries. Let's go that way. Looks pretty clear to me, that one. Yeah, and that one. They all look clear, so I think they're Okay, so I'm going to put the float valves back in, put the floats back on and make sure they're set before I put it back. But before that, I'm going to check this and then I'll give them all a blow through. There's definitely a thread in there and it does look absolutely fine. I cannot for the life of me imagine why that came out. And yeah, it's clear really can't. wasn't at all put in right. I'm going to get myself a better screwdriver that'll fit that better. Just give it a nip. I'll check the rest while I'm at it. No reason that should come undone. I've turned the pressure down a little bit on the gun now. So I can definitely feel I'll go through, check everything, I'll open the slides up and make sure I can feel air coming through. Um, and on the uh, the vents. Yeah, that's definitely a venting, isn't it? Just take the spring off. So that I can open these and check that everything's blowing through in the way that I would expect. Blown everything through and I'm quite confident it's working. These little vents here, this one vents out of here into the float chamber and then from there to atmosphere. Same the other way and they're all working great. I've done blowing through the jets on the front. I can't see that there's any reason these carbs shouldn't just carb now. Having blown everything through, I'll get the floats back on, check the float heights, put the bowls on, put them back on the bike. Can't see why these just wouldn't work. Listen carefully. They all seem to be working great. They all look good to me. The final thing before I put these on, I'm going to look very carefully to make sure I can't see any splits in the tubes. I've had that as a problem with a carb in the past. There doesn't seem to be anything that's causing an issue with any of these. I might just give them a quick blast through with some carb cleaner. Now that one's got a little bit of a uh, 
markings on it, you know, it's like someone's pulled it out in the past and maybe put it back. I will just give that a little bit more of a look at before I put it back on, but it doesn't look like it's got a hole in it. And that looks fine as well. What these are is that if it overfills it drains out through here. Now that could be what was causing this one that kept leaking, but can't see any reason why. Right, I'm going to give these a blast with car cleaner and put them on. A couple of the gaskets that came off. Right then. So. And last, and by no means least. Oops. Now, I can't see why they should be causing a problem. All the air screws are set to one and a quarter hour at the moment. I did use my uh, special tool and I even measured it again. So I think these are really okay. I've put a pipe in so I'm only connecting into one area. Both sides have got equal chance of fuel getting to them. Should be okay. Let's get these carbs on now. been off give them a good going through should be absolutely fine all I need to do now is check the wiring add fuel and hopefully it should run and run better than it was doing this HT lead with the one on the other side because it's not running on those two cylinders which should be nothing to do with the HT but I just want to rule it out first it's got to be something to do with the carbs on this side but I'll swap this over and see what happens I'm really glad I didn't trim these down yet there we go just about makes it let's see if it starts Definitely nothing to do with the plug leads or the plugs. Oh, I don't know about the plugs, plug leads. Next thing I'll do is I'll swap this plug onto the other side and see if that makes any difference. That's a warm plug, the one out of the uh, number four cylinder. And that is a cold plug out of the number one cylinder. Now, they have run before, so I can't really go off what they look like. But I'm just gonna swap them so let's see what happens this time. I've topped up the fuel reservoir so we should be getting fuel coming through. 
and we are absolutely no question about it and just to add a little bit to the fun I noticed uh, when I came to look at the bike yesterday before I got it out this decided to leak a little bit of the oil um, it wasn't at first so hopefully it's nothing big looking from here I think it might be the oil feed pipes or something like that we'll have to have a look at them I was very disappointed when I saw the oil underneath the bike and uh, like you do you think it's going to be something that you've done a seal missing, a gasket not done properly. Anyway, I've looked at it a little bit further now and I've come to the conclusion that it's not this oil pipe, but the one behind it. I've done that old trick of putting some paper, well, give it a good wipe over, putting some paper around different parts of it to try and work out what's the high spot that the oil's coming from, because that is where it, you know, unless it's squirting upwards, is, is gonna be where the leak is. Um, in this instance, what I've found is that the top, where I was hoping it was the washer, seems to be absolutely fine. In the middle, I've put some round and there is a little bit of oil on that. So I think it might be the pipe inside or the, the join where the pipe joins the, the fastener at the top. And down at the bottom here, it is definitely uh, a lot more oil. So. Somewhere around here, I think the pipe has actually breached. I was uh, thinking it might be the seal at the bottom as well, because obviously that's where it's dripping off. But it drips off the lowest bit. It doesn't drip, you know, it doesn't drip upwards. So it's definitely fine there. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'll probably have a look at that when I've got the uh, big issue sorted, which at the moment is, seems to only run on two cylinders for most of the time. I've obviously cocked up somewhere with the carbs. I was thinking it's got to be the fuel supply, but I've swapped the pipes around a few times. It doesn't seem to be that. So I'm gonna have the carbs off again, have another quick look at them, and see what happens there. The oil leak's not gonna kill it in the meantime. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the wonderful back end of the British summer, which means I actually don't think I'm gonna ride this bike this year but I'm definitely going to have it ready to go for the start of next year. So let's crack on with that. There's no smoking gun. Everything looks okay in here. Now, it's these two carbs that weren't giving of their best, let me say. And my first thoughts were that this pipe or the feed here isn't working correctly. So that's what I'll investigate first. The next thing I'll have a look at is the needles. Just check that all four needles are at the same because I think you know just in case these are a lot lower maybe closing it off more I, you know it's daft as it sounds I haven't checked that I will take out the pilot jets and have a look at them I think I'm going to find them very clean I think I'm going to end up where I go through this and I don't find a smoking gun and that's really annoying but if I put them off on afterwards and they actually do run on all four I'll be all right with that. Flow heights all look absolutely fine. Now, by blowing into this tube and lifting the floats, I'll just see if it seems like the pipe is clear. So, keep a constant pressure on this, a bit of lung pressure going on. See if you can hear the noises 
over the top of the rain. <laughs> you might not have heard that over the rain, but I can hear that all of these seem to be clear, which is what I found the first time round, I think. I'll just take the jets out. Now they've all come out easy enough, which sort of indicates they must have been done recently. They look clean, I'll have another look at them and I'll have a look down the holes. But, I can't see anything wrong there straight away, like I say, no smoking gun yet. And with the jets out, I can see the needles are all down at the same level, so they're all set the same. So it's definitely not that. I check these front airways by spraying a little bit of carb cleaner in them and looking at where it comes out and I can see it's coming out there from that one and out of the main jet orifice from that one so I'll check all of them make sure they're clear so they all look good well, I think I found maybe a bit of a smoking gun. You might be able to just see, this is the uh, pilot jets from one, two and three. And number three looks reasonably clear and so is number four. Number two is a little bit blocked and number one is uh, definitely blocked. Now, although they look really clean on the outside, I think it might be that some petrol has gummed that up and that might be entirely my fault. So I'm going to give them a clean and put them back in. These jets are very, very fine. Much finer actually than what it looks like, the holes at the end. So you do need a very fine wire. A number 11 from a, an electric guitar, I think it's the high E string, is the one that... Uh, Keep in my toolbox. Let to see. There we go. And I'll use that to poke it through. You can get files for um, nozzles off uh, oxyacetylene torches and the like. They're usually far too big. Number 11, give it a good poke through. Well, I'm quite hopeful having found the pilot jets being blocked. So I'll clean them out. I've checked all the jets, I've checked all the airways again, I've reset the flow tights, I've checked that, you know, it looks like these should be working without any blockages whatsoever. Um, I've bench set them so that they just open. Now, I think these carbs are about as good as I can get them without actually having them running on the bike. So if it doesn't run on all cylinders now, I've probably got to investigate elsewhere else. I don't really like starting bikes in the workshop. I mean, I can do, but uh, I like to take a bit of care. So I've got a fan that blows out. I have the window open. I know where the fire extinguisher is. I've got some blankets to throw over if something goes wrong. And the fuel source I'm going to use is near the window. So if you have to grab it out and drag it outside, I will do. <laughs> Should be no problem. I've put the cabs back on. I've checked that there's oil, I'm going to connect the battery up, connect the fuel up, see if it leaks out, uh, no doubt we'll get a little bit of dripping carb, you seem to always get that. The actual float valves take a while to run in, Yeah, they don't always seal immediately and if they get any kind of muck go through whatsoever they'll, they'll, they'll leak for fun. Uh, it's just you have to live with it. It's why Honda put the pipes on so that it trickled out somewhere where you didn't always see it. Right, so fingers crossed. Get ready to catch the drips. It seems to have settled at that and nothing's leaking out. Those are the famous last words that mean something will leak now. Well, that's the fan on, everything's ready to go. Choke on, ignition on, let's see what happens. Should be a bit noisy.
let's run it for a little bit longer and see if uh, it suddenly chimes in. It does happen. Overall, I'm quite pleased with my progress today. I've identified where the um, oil leak is on the pipe from the tank. I've gone through the carbs. It runs and it will run on all four. Definitely runs on all four, certainly on the choke. It would appear cylinder two is still a little bit relu more reluctant once the choke's shut. Uh, off camera, I actually ran it with the choke and uh, had the heat gauge on number two and you could see the temperature rising take the choke off now it could be just a matter of balancing the carbs so I'm not stressed about that I do suspect if it was a uh, out on the road on it you might not even notice number two wasn't playing as much as number one three and four not worry about that I think next I might have a go at uh, balancing them see if that makes a difference with uh, number two it would be sensible Failing that then, I'll have a look at swapping the, uh, the jets around. If you've enjoyed this, why not subscribe? Watch along whenever, you know, we put something new out.